adventure. Tonight's exciting story by Ron Evans is called Arctic Treasure. white 
desolation of ice flows, so tightly packed that the clear blue of the water could barely be seen between them. Only one thing stood out. A huge iceberg dead ahead of us. Its peak was at least 50 feet high, and it was a quarter of a mile in width, and the greater portion of this was not more than a few feet above sea level. The skipper reduced speed as we drew close to the berg, and we slowly nosed our way through the pack ice, then hard a port on the wheel, and we came alongside a flat stretch of the berg, as neatly as we did the mothership. Fred, Snorri, and Lars jumped over the side of the ice, each armed with a sledgehammer and two steel pikes. These were hammered into the ice to hold fast our mooring ropes. We had moored at the point nearest to the steep rise of the berg, and the peak now towered above our tiny ship, only a few yards away. Littering the berg was a huge colony of seals, literally hundreds of them, most watched with interest, unaware of the fate in store for them. you taped him. More like you told him, didn't you? All right, I'll admit it. I'd have hated to see you being given the killing work, but I have to look after the moor. For that, I suppose I should be thankful. But why I should have to stand here and watch the ropes is a mystery. It looks very secure to me. You're dead wrong, Tim. Bergs can be very treacherous. They'll split in half, crumble even on the slightest pretext. Thanks for the cheerful news. What will you chaps do out there if that happens? <laughs> Make a mad dash back here if we can. Oh, there's little risk to the ship, laddie. We're all right, really, so long as we don't get dunked in the water. And if you do? A man's life expectancy in that water's less than a minute, I've heard. Oh, here's the mate, Fred. You ready, Freddy? Yes. Yes, I was just warning young Tim here of the dangers. Oh, great. That saves me the job. But what do I do if the berg does start to break up? Into fragments, I mean. Yeah, well, you see the slope over there? Yeah. The main danger lies in a split appearing there and breaking away. The broken part could roll and drag the ship over with it. Now, if that happens, cut the moorings. <laughs> Don't look so alarmed, kid. It's a million to one, but it's as well to know. Okay? Yes, yes. You find a fire axe, fore and aft. Go along and put them beside the bollards, just in case. Okay, Freddy, let's go. The skipper Snorri and Lars are waiting for us. I watched them go, rifles slung over their shoulders and long clubs swinging from their hands. They didn't bother with a few seals in sight of the ship. The main colony was on the other side of the berg. I got out the axes and laid them on the deck. I shuddered when the shooting started. The ugly picture of the slaughter in my mind's eye. As the shots echoed out across the stillness of the icy waste, small chunks of ice broke away from the high peak and came down the slope in numerous miniature avalanches. At first it worried me, but I quickly realized it was of little importance and only caused by the sound waves of the shots. Trying to take my morbid thoughts off the slaughter, I studied the white peak, which had obviously once been part of the glacier. I looked at a point a third of the way up. A large chunk of ice dislodged itself and came tumbling down, breaking up into small pieces during its descent. The particles came to rest on more than 50 feet from the ship. When I looked back, there was a dark scar at the point where the ice had broken away. And the more I looked at it, the more intrigued I became. What could be the cause, I wondered. Something up there, I'm sure of it. If I could just get a closer look. Of course, there's the skipper's binoculars. With luck, he'll have left them in the wheelhouse. I'm darn sure he won't have taken them with him. Ah, here they are. Maybe I'm just imagining it. Oh, it could just be a crevice in the ice. Now, where is it? where each eyepiece has to be focused. It can't be. How can there be a piece of timber up there? It's, it's too timber at that. Perfectly round 
it and neatly cut off at the end that's sticking out. It's, it's almost as though it's the yardarm of another ship. <laughs> it can't be. How could a ship be in the middle of an iceberg? I was both astonished and very curious. And this made me do a foolish thing. Yes, foolish it may have been, but I'm glad to this day that I did. Putting the binoculars back into the wheelhouse, I then jumped over onto the ice and started up the slope. It rose only gradually at first. But soon the going became harder as it got steeper. Chunks of ice slid from under my feet, but I kept on, my eyes fixed on that piece of wood. Then I had it in my hand, and solid, smooth wood it was. It poked out through a hole in the ice, which was about two feet wide. inside the berg. There's just enough room for me to uh, yeah, squeeze in here. Uh, it's like a tunnel. Reflects the light well. What's this? An iron ring around it. This looks like a piece of a piece of thick cloth. Better be careful, otherwise I'll Oh, no. I must be seeing things. It's, it's impossible. Just keep 
What the devil do you think you're doing? Get out of there, but quick. <laughs> Not yet, Tom. Come and take a look here. You darn fool, the whole ice cap is about to come down around the ears. Oh, Tom, you must come and look, please. Is there nothing we can do to save it? Oh, that kid's gone crazy. <laughs> look, do you realize the value of this find? It'll, it'll settle a lot of historical arguments and... Obviously, oh, shut up and get wise to yourself. Are you trying to get us both killed? Uh, we must find a way of saving the ship, Tom. Look at it. I ain't looking at anything. Are you coming with me, or do I have to carry you? Float, I wonder. If we could tow it back. All right, you ask I for it. it. Now maybe you'll do as you're told. <laughs> He's heavy. The poor kid must have gone off his head. As though this old hulk has bewitched him. Better step on it. This berg's gonna fall apart any minute. Home, I went to great pains to identify the tribe the Indians had come from. By the 
address. They were Tuscaroras, who had once lived in the area now known as New York. But though I knew this to be true, making others believe me was a different matter. I was laughed at and told I was a charlatan trying to make a name for myself. In the end, I gave up. And this is the first time in 50 years I've told the story. Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Duffenthal.